Hey, what's up you guys? It's Connor and today I'm going to be doing a book review on Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. Nine Fox Gambit is an adult science fiction novel which follows humans after they have spread across different galaxies and different worlds. Their whole society is structured on the high calendar and people believing in the high calendar and thinking in the high calendar. It's, it's what allows their weapons to work and what allows their societies to function the way that they do. There are populations that do not follow the high calendar and some of them are gaining in popularity and spreading their heretical calendars to other places and one such place is a very important place when it comes to this society and the people in charge of the society have decided that it is time to step in and fix the problem. It falls on the shoulders of this lower ranking military woman named Charisse and she has to come up with a plan to retake this one specific fortress and get rid of the heretical calendar and reinstate the high calendar. This book is so much more complicated than that and so I'm going to do my best to describe everything that's happening but that is the basic premise. Since humans have spread out throughout space there are different groups of humans and the ones that follow the high calendar they all fall under this one governing mishmash of people that is called the Hexarchate. Their society used to be a Heptarchate but it is now a Hexarchate because an entire branch of their society was destroyed because it was heretical. There are populations within the Hexarchate, within this society, that do not serve the society. They just live their lives and are on planets and doing their own thing. But when you decide to serve, you fall into six different types of servitude to the Hexarchate. The first type is the Kel, and that is what our main character is serving under. She is one of the Kel, and the Kel are very unlucky. They are the footmen, basically, of the society. They're considered the most expendable, and they're kind of looked down upon by all of the other branches because they're known for being very reactionary. They respond to things without thinking things through a lot of the time. And the way that the Kel are formulated is that they're injected with this thing that forces them to follow orders from higher up people in the Kel branch. And so a lot of them don't even have the choice to follow orders or not. They just have to follow orders. And it, and it makes for very well constructed formations. And these formations in their world allow them to create shields. And it's it's got all to do with time and formations and calendars. So that side is, is complicated just in its own. The Kells usually think in, about things in terms of winning and losing. Those are the only two options. And the Kel very much want to win. And lastly, every branch of this Hexarchate system has a different logo or symbol or something like that. And the one for the Kel is the Ash Hawk, which is also called the Suicide Hawk because the Kel are killed off a lot. <laughs> the next branch in the Hexarchate is the Shuos. They control the Kel, sort of. They tell the Kel where to go. They're strategists. They're considered very untrustworthy because they like to play a lot of games. The way they think about problems is that they always try to manipulate people's behaviors because of certain situations and the ways that other people will think. They will take all those things into account and then try to force the other players to do what they want. The other main character really of this story is one of the Shuos and so you learn a lot about the Kel and the Shuos mostly in this novel. Next is the Narai. They are the intellectual thinkers of this world. They do a lot of research. This is the branch that our main character, Charisse, could have gone into if she wanted to. She was smart enough to be able to become a Narai and serve the Hexarchate in that fashion, but she decided to go the Kel route anyway. When faced with a problem, the Narai really focus in on different simulations, and so they'll run different simulations in their mind or through computers to try to solve the problem and come up with the best solution. Next is the Andon, Andan, not sure how you pronounce that, but they are the hippies, basically, of the Hexarchate. They just want to have a good time. A lot of them are rich. They just kind of hang out, don't really do too much, and it seems like the life that I would want to live would be one of the Andon. The fifth branch is the Rahal, Rahal, I don't know, and these are the rule upkeepers. They enforce all the rules, and so when thinking about a problem, they're thinking about the different rules that they have to follow and trying to figure out how to succeed while all the rules are being followed basically. Their symbol is the scry wolf and you don't really learn too much about them or the Narai or the Andan or the sixth branch in the Hexate but they're there. <laughs> and the last branch of the Hexarchate is the Vedona. They are the most secretive. I think that they are the leaders really of this system. They tend to be high up in 
the structure, and that's basically all you know about the Vedona, so moving on. When the Hexarchate used to be a Heptarchate, there was a seventh branch, and that one was called the Leozi. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's L-I-O-Z-H. They were the idealists and the philosophers of the Heptarchate. They used to be the leaders, but then because they were destroyed because of heresy, the Vedona then became the leaders. And this is everything that I think is true with the world building of the science fiction novel. With that all being done, as usual with my book reviews, I'm going to go through my pros, give you my cons, give you my rating, and be done. My first pro for this is going to be the world. I really liked, once I got a grip on the world, how interesting it was and how many different branches there were within this ruling body. I liked learning the different symbols and what each thing meant because even though you're serving in the Kel and their symbol is the Ashhawk, it doesn't mean that every symbol for each person is the same. So our main character's Ash Hawk has wings that are closed or something like that, and, and that means something specific. So different symbols mean different things, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many things going on in this world, and I think that it is so vast that it has the potential to be explored in so many different ways, and I think that that is a huge pro for this book and this series. The next pro that I have is going to be the main character. I really liked reading about Charisse and her growth throughout this novel. Her and and Judeo both grow a lot. I don't know how much Judeo grows, but you definitely learn a lot about them and you start to learn about why they made the choices that they made and what their motivations are and what is behind those motivations. And so I really liked learning about the characters and reading from their perspectives and seeing how they went about dealing with the problems that surfaced during this novel. So the main characters were a big plus for me. I like how many questions this book brought up for me. I just like the questions on what is right and what is wrong, what puts someone in the right. It's all very like the people who write history decide what is right and what is wrong, but I liked that the characters themselves have to explore those themes and questions themselves, and I just like like those. I like that this is very physics heavy. Is it quantum physics that is all about time and everything like that? It's kind of over my head realistically. I don't really understand everything about it obviously because this book is still quite confusing. I don't really have a firm grasp on everything that's happening but I did like the elements of time and how the calendars affected how things worked and if you believed in a certain calendar then that meant that this happens with this type of weapon and being in this formation creates this shield or this style of fighting or and everything like that. I really enjoyed learning about the different elements of time and how they affected the science fiction elements in this series. Another thing I liked is the last 100 pages. I was super invested in the story. I was super invested in the characters. I wanted to know what was happening and I had a firm enough grasp on the world building to just fly through the pages and really get into the story and the plot and the battles and it just all kept me very entertained and enthralled. Another pro is going to be that there are some emails included in the text from the bad person's point of view. The problem of the Hexarchate, you get some of their perspective. So it'll start something like this and it says, from Vahines Afrir Denum, I don't know how to say that. And then it's to the, to the person that is, you'll find out when you read it. But I like that. The funny bits in this book all happen in these emails. Mainly the one that I thought was pretty funny was every time that he sends an email, he always dates it. And the timestamp for every email is always different. And and you can tell that the person sending the emails does not give a crap about what calendar that they are thinking in. The year of the fatted cow, month of the partridge, day of the carp, the vote in doctrine says it's the hour of the snail and I for one have better things to argue about. So I liked those emails as well. I thought they were pretty funny and added a lot to the story. And my last pro for this book is going to be that it just has a very promising future in the series. It has set up a lot of possible directions that the story can go and I'm excited to see which one Yoon Ha Lee explores in the sequel. Now onto some of my cons. My biggest con for this is going to be how complicated it was and how it did just drop you off into the story and you had to figure it out on your own. And not because that other books don't do that and I can't deal with that because I can, but for like 200 pages, I had no idea what was happening and I just had to guess. A lot of the time I found myself reading and just hoping the words would make sense eventually. And so I think this is one of those books that you have to read it and then reread it to get everything because the first 150 pages, you're not really gonna understand what is happening because you don't know what anything means. You don't find out until later. So hopefully if you guys go into this book 
with the world setup kind of explained to you earlier in the video, then you will be able to grasp more of the beginning of the novel. But for me, I was so lost and so confused for the majority of this book. And there's also a high number of characters. And so because you're having to juggle both all of the world building terminology and the different Hexarchate divisions with all of the characters having different names that I'm not used to. It was just a lot. It was almost too much and it really detracted from my enjoyment of this novel. I mean, actually that's my biggest and really only con, but it's so huge that it affected my reading experience so much. In the end, I enjoyed this novel and I ended up giving it three stars. Because I liked the last 100 pages of the book so much, my knee-jerk reaction was to give it four, but then I was thinking about it more and I realized how I didn't really enjoy the first 200 pages, so I dropped it down to three. Again, if I reread it, I'll probably bump my rating up, but as a first-time read, I am going to end up giving it three stars. I do recommend it if you are a huge science fiction fan or you are big into quantum physics. So that's gonna be my review on Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read this book as well. Was it as hard for you to understand as it was for me? If you have any science fiction recommendations for me, leave those down in the comments and I will talk to you guys next time.